what I saw just not even two weeks ago. This is exactly what 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 a gambit would do. They would build Shadow Fiend, Guardian Greaves uh, early on. You get Visage, Helm of the Dominator, and you just push as a team. Yeah, and that explains that they just probably pick a whole lot more then because again, more competency is of pushing. Nature's Prophet actually has expendable summons, whereas Visage's summons are not really worth throwing their lives away just to get kills or pushing here and there. And so, yeah, if it is that Greaves build, which may sound like a heresy to some Shadow Fiend purists, but apparently this is another way. I'm not 100% too sure who popularized it. I know CCNC has given some credit in terms of uh, making it popular in North America, at least. But that's the go-to build for Shadow Fiend, and it makes him incredibly tanky for a who should be fairly fragile. Yeah. It's, it was really interesting to kind of see the idea of it, but... Again, it's seen it in practice. We've seen it with this strategy. We've seen it, you know, when you have a safe link or like a Phantom Assassin, for example, Shadow Fiend's aura is very powerful. And so if you could just build him to, as you're saying, kind of this bulky hero to just stay alive and provide that aura and still do tons of damage with the Rage and the Requiem, then most certainly uh, he'll be a very valuable asset to your team. So uh, Templar Assassin is the final pick, though, into that mid matchup against Shadow Fiend. No doubt a good one at that. It is, but it's not. So dealing with what potential care might bring out. I'm really hoping that TNC would pick something with a wave clear. Because right now there are no good ways at dealing with profit summons. Really it's just Phoenix's fire spirit and bit damage at best. And that's minimal. And you need damage. You can't just like draw aggro off because Prophet uh, can control this you know, so he can just park his treants right in front of the tower and they can tank a bunch of hits, but TA can't deal with treants. Terrorblade can't really deal with treants. As odd as that sounds, Terrorblade can't clear them easily. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I'm at least glad that they gave Ninja Boogie Dazzle and it's not a core level uh, because I think that that would have had a really tough time against a hard strap that Chaos is bringing out. But I don't really like TNC having a strong lack of wave clear. I think that's going to be something that they come back to haunt them as this game goes on to like 15 minutes and this top of Nature's Prophet starts moving around the map, which it is going to be a top of Nature's Prophet, not an HFN or Miser Nature's Prophet. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's a couple of things there. HFN playing the Shadow Fiend, usually they're position one player, but I, I gotta think this is a comfort thing. We, of course, plays micro heroes in general, specifically Visage 2. Uh, I assume he'll still end up in the safe lane and then they'll have Shadow Fiend, or maybe not with the matchup now. I suppose they could change it up right here if they feel it would be better, but. Point is, I'm not stuck to that, just because when what? HFN, him, he is heading towards the mid lane for now, looks like, so yeah, we'll be the safe lane. But on the other side, by the way, Earth Spirit in the hands of Ryur, who's labeled as their offlane player, of course, replacing Cuckoo for this event. Offlane Earth Spirit? Uh, I guess. I don't, yeah, because the Phoenix is... Played by Tim's, who is their four position, yeah. and hmm, I mean, a lot of people have been very <laughs> intimidated recently. Uh, I know Capitalist made a tweet comparing Earth Spirit's strength gain per level and Centaur's strength gain per level. Earth Spirit gets 3.8 strength per level, and Centaur War Runner, who is considered the beefiest show in the game, I believe, is either 4.0 or 4.2. But they are very close in terms of how tanky they can get, and. Earth Spirit, anytime that he starts seeing some exposure, is always on the chopping block for nerfs. And a lot of people initially were like, oh, rolling boulders a stun now? What a nerf, because you can't multi-hero stun like you could with boulder smash. But you also have a four-second stun cooldown. So Earth Spirit players have to be some of the most abused players in the entire game, but they persevere. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up with v -Dance. I'm glad you did with the whole rolling boulder. Four-second cooldown on what essentially is a, a one second stun, but every four seconds you can just, it, that's insane when you, when you really think about it. And when, at the later levels, you will study that your spirits are constantly rolling around and taking advantage of course that ability. So, you know, perhaps playing the offlane obviously gets in that level that much quicker. It's gonna be curious to see what kind of farm he uses, maybe something like an earlier blink dagger perhaps to help with that positioning and uh, getting in there, taking advantage of the leveled up rolling boulder, but. Some uniqueness coming out here from TNC, and frankly, I, I expect this here at this event again. This is the first major, of course, since 7.20, where a lot did change, it's safe to say, when it came to the strategy. Yeah, and people have been, I, I think, uh, 
what, playing auto chess in the meanwhile, maybe because they don't want to show <laughs> anything? Because I've been equally curious, waiting for the first mission to see what emerges, and whatever we were seeing during online tournaments like Greaves Shadowfiend is just the tip of the iceberg, I think. Middle lane, the courier snipe, Tim's is not patient enough, or is he? He's gonna maybe wait for it to return right here. He definitely knows it's coming. In fact, it's going way up there. Shadow Fiend playing aggressive, so now Tim's gonna try to snipe it on the way back. No, nope, never mind. Yeah. Oh, it goes knife. Oh. He's got it. Radiance there you yeah. go. Takes it out, though. Good patience there. Surprised HFN just let it go like that, because definitely got vision of the Phoenix on multiple occasions, but. It goes out, and Phoenix immediately heads to the bot lane, which Rior didn't really need the help. Rior's doing just fine right now. He's a bad at level 2 and solo against the Visage and the support tiny. Yeah, when it comes to Visage, it goes without saying, of course, uh, I'd say he's strong. I mean, he's an okay laner, but of course those familiars is what really accelerates him. So until level 6, you can play perhaps a bit more aggressive, but you also have to expect that Grave Chill and eventually solo time should level 1 too, even the nuke that it could do with a hero like Tiny pairing uh, as well. But yeah, with, with the Phoenix here, definitely a different story. And yeah, it would be a good way to burn through the upcoming Gravekeeper's Cloak. That is one thing that I think TNC is going uh, well for them is that they have good ways of jumping on the Visage and not letting that Visage just plink away with familiar damage and have those Gravekeeper Cloak stacks just stay up infinitely because that's the way that a lot of Visages are being played. Uh, they are just... Auras for familiars, and they just let the familiars do everything while they sit back and make sure that they can pull the damage to tank everything over. Mid lane matchup right now: ten and five Shadow Fiend, make it eleven, make it twelve and five. Even as I'm talking about it, nine and one Templar Assassin. So HFN, even an Arcane Rune currently used right here, so he's able to get that two minute Arcane Rune, making the most out of it as he spams those raises. So all three CS favoring Chaos right now. When it comes to their cores, at least in the landing phase, we get the bottom lane, Grave Chill, and he'll just run away. As Rear did a go in with that rolling boulder. Tim's the return, though. Icarus dive, he's going to be fine, and now Rear's in the face of Visage. Boulder up in two seconds. He's doing some good damage. Throws out the boulder smash and the roll for the first blood. What a way to start things off with the first spear right here. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. Oh, still got a solid available. And the tank's going to be looking for the no, Yeah, Visage, another hero that also has. Very little armor. It's all in Gravekeeper's Cloak. Why is he has no natural armor? At least we have does manage to complete a uh, hundred though, so he's gonna be a little bit more tanky. I think the way to the Vlads. Top lane, Terror Blade. 14 and 1, so he is picking it up quite a bit. Uh, but Nature's Prophet, it goes us, especially with an Oracle teammate. I can't say I'm too surprised that Nature's Prophet is having a good time. In fact, they're going for a kill on Gabby. Oh, that was almost it. Ninja Boogie throws up the shallow for the last second to make sure to keep him alive. Bottom lane, meanwhile, they will lose their Earth Spirit, making it a one to one game now as Chaos ties things up. But yeah, with that top lane pressure on top of that bottom lane kill, this landing phase is looking fantastic right now for the Radiant Squad. Yeah, it's terrible. Like I said, cannot deal with Trance. And it doesn't, I mean, I mean, obviously, like, it doesn't matter because you are never going to be in danger of Trance now, Armel. Duking it out with HFN for the spoon. Yep. <laughs> it's like, I'll take the A little bit of bait right there, but yeah, easy kill on him. Good job with the rotation. And bottom lane. Well, they get the kill on a tiny. Go for the turn in the Soul Assumption. Not enough damage, though, onto Earth Spirit. So, you know, this is what I expected. I was looking at the series and everything. We noticed that this is the one we're assigned to cast first. I expected action, and we are, we're, we're getting it early on here, and I don't think it's going to slow down by any means. No, especially the way that Chaos drafted. They can't afford to slow down. And goes late, the tier blade will be too difficult for them to uh, deal with, and the TA is going to be doing a good job and sure it doesn't even get to the point to begin with, because her mid-game is going to be very, very strong. Assuming that she's going to keep this space against Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend, despite that death, still doing fairly well in CS, and I... I'm definitely looking forward to how HFN is going to build this because I can't imagine he can go far enough other than the Greaves build. Yeah. Anything would be too slow uh, given their draft. Ex yeah, I, I feel like you're committed to that. And actually, on that point, I was I was going to ask you about it too. The Nature's Prophet, do you think he's going to be picking up a Vlad? Because again, if you're going to be grouping yeah. up, that's that's like the strong item right now, right? At most, then maybe uh, I think it's Reha can build the Vlad because he already has the headdress, and so you let um, Medallion build by Tavo because Visage needs one of them. And I guess if 
we uh, needs the Hedris region in the land. Then go ahead and let the Prophet build a medallion instead. Prophet can row is rotate wherever your familiars are with the teleportation and then go get a gank that way. But either way, those are the three core items, I think. Greaves may be like a little too long, at least they'll get like the mech and maybe start doing something, but mech, Vlad's medallion, and then I think you're ready to start grouping up as chaos. Nice, so keeping an eye on their progress as far as TNC is concerned. Again, Terrorblade, he's just worrying about getting any kind of CS he can and he's gonna try to put some pressure on a Tavo, but Tavo's already got power treads. I mean, he's, he's bulky, he's, he's just fine. He just simply walks away, sprouts up defensively, and he'll be out of there as Oracle's rotated to the middle lane, meanwhile, setting up a kill attempt onto Armel. It's gonna be a tough one, but a couple of raises in synergy. It's uh, okay, they get a the refraction pop, so gotta get that off. Here comes a Fortune's End. And Purifying Flips, Tavo comes in with a uh, TP as well with the Sprout and the Tree Block, but too many supports TPing in from the other side and not worth the chase there in the end, so the rotation unsuccessful. Yeah, and as a result, Gabby gets a little bit of tier 1 damage up top and the glyph has popped out. I'm actually surprised that Miser didn't go for the Courier. The, the Courier shield was guaranteed down because we saw the Shadow Fiend have to deal with it True. when he died, and he hit a double damage around the Oracle, but they thought that they could penetrate through fraction didn't end up working out and TNC respond well enough so at minimum a lot of TNC support TPs are going to be down after that gank attempt. Yeah. Air Spirit. When it comes to CS, Air Spirit not the most fantastic. 19-1 down there on the charts but he's level 4, almost level 5 about to hit it here. He's got double bracer build early on and it looks like the uh, Hood Defiance is going to be his pick up a perhaps a, a pipe he's going to be looking to pick up sooner than later in this game do you think that's going to be a valuable one if he chooses to go for that ah uh, there's not much magic damage to be concerned about i mean it's a nice aura but i it's a little bit surprising that he's even considering that because wait it's primarily physical damage as we see physical damage is completely obliterating this top tier one tower I'm like a bottom Weehaw. lane, we, yeah, once again, he's trouble though. Triple, three heroes even coming together and an easy kill on him. Grape Jill's not gonna save Tiny doing what he can, but it is not enough. So the rotating Dazzle gets in there, but as you were talking about, the top tower goes down to all of that right click, specifically behind the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, and Terrorblade, like I said, not a hero equipped to be able to draw aggro off of towers. Uh, he's just gonna have to retreat in the jungle, which isn't really the worst case scenario. Around level 6, this is around when you see Terrorblades transition in the jungle, no matter how good of a laning phase they had, just because it's easier to free up the lane for someone else, and few heroes farm as well as TB, as HFN now. Kind of getting some focus, but it looks like Ninja Boogie is gonna be the real Ooh. casualty. Nice block right there with the Sprout, easy kill as a result, yeah, Nature's Prophet, good rotation, but... You look at the build of Shadow Fiend, actually. There you go. Power Treads finish. So hmm. we're not going to see that Guardian Greaves build. Uh, you know, again, I've just been seeing so much of it recently. I just assumed that was the case. But yeah, he had different plans, at least. What's the plan? What, like, <laughs> it, I, I hope it's not the Yule's build. The Yule's build would be my least favorite of the options. Uh, a lot of people like the various new Kaya combos on SF. But I don't really think he can go combat oriented. He's too squishy, and he's not going to be able to like go head on into a fight whenever he has to deal with like Dazzle slowing him down, and Phoenix slowing him down, and Trap slowing him down, and stuff like that. Um, you can, I guess, go for an early BKB, but I'm not a fan of that either. I don't know. It's surprising to me. Because even the purge, like, you see Oracle just now purging the SF with Fortune's End. There's so many things, like, so many slows, like I said, that would be so useful to dispel if you had Greaves, but he's gonna stick with this while the rest of his team pushes Weeha and Tavo head up to the top lane and just chunk it down. It, maybe they just figure they can get away with this in the sense that they, they don't need it because this is somewhat of a greedier draft from TNC and yeah, Tim's is doing everything he can to survive right here so Icarus dives away after the toss in, but now he wants to fight because a roll in from right here, he actually gets a nice magnetize off, they will lose Tiny in the back lines, and the chase continues, we huh? Don't have familiar to the north, but they want the real hero, they want Visage, and Visage is going to be killed off as well, The ultimately ends up being a great response for TNC as a 10 minute bounty rune spawn as well, and Again, kind of goes back to this, it's, you know, they're pushing a tier 2 tower right there, which is understandable, you have a helm the Dominator and everything, but maybe, uh, maybe being a bit too ambitious this early on in the game when you don't have all the R items yet. I don't even think he had Vlad's, I think he got it right after fight happened. Yeah, I don't think they did, and just a Dominator is not sufficient to be able to go for that. But 
I, I guess it was a pretty heavy rotation from TNC, and the tier 2 tower top still takes a ton of damage. It's definitely very easy for Nature's Prophet to make his way over there at some point and finish it off, so... They're getting structural damage, maybe that's like the goal, is just Scorched Earth tactics. Just go in, get as much damage as possible, distract the enemy team, and maybe let SF become your hard carry. Maybe they're having him as an insurance plan in case the game goes late. They have something to do with Terror Blade, something to deal with Terror Blade, but... That sounds so dangerous, though. <laughs> exactly, yeah. When you're going up against a Terror Blade and a TA, for that matter, it's not like Shadow Fiend's going to be this scaling core. Against and now Shadow Fiend is building the mech, so he has the Buckler and he has the Headdress. So Interesting, okay. Treads into mech, but you won't have the Greaves. Yeah, but the rest of his team is converging on mid. Well, can, could get a boot for each foot, I suppose, so could eventually do it if he wants to. <laughs> Middle lane? <laughs> Beat even, yeah. Uh, Phoenix, he throws up the ultimate there, but Chaos just simply walks away. And not enough lockdown keep them in place. And that is one thing that stands out on the side of TNC, or the lack thereof. When it comes to crowd control, they are frankly horrible at it. We mentioned Earth Spirit with the rolling is nice, but outside of that, they really don't have anything. So, that is going to be an issue as this game progresses. Yeah, it's always so stressful as a Phoenix to have to use those early supernovas into an enemy team, because really everyone just needs to turn at you and attack once, and then your egg is basically dead at level 6. So, you can do it and be like, guys, go away, I'm using my supernova, but it's more of a bluff, because you can't really get too close to them. And they take off every single, uh, they take off the tier 1 mid, tier 1 top, immediately head into Roche. So, Chaos has a plan. I, I can't imagine that things are going that far off, so I guess this is just the plan. Let Shadow Fiend get some damage from him so you can have someone to right-click, but Rior wants to challenge it. He wants to. They didn't have a medallion in either, as, uh, so it's taking a little bit longer than maybe expected. Anyway, Supernova not going to happen because it's still on cooldown. Requiem did go off, though. Rior's still in the middle of it, however. Magnetize will spread out. False Promise to use on himself by Misery, so he will not be able to save a teammate now. He does fully heal and it wears off. Nobody ends up tying because of how the fight played out right here. And we're not even done just yet, though. Gabby's in the middle of the rush. What is he doing right here? He has Sunder. He's in a bad spot, though. He's got Shallow Grave to kind of back him up. So he's chasing after somebody. Armel going to meld up. They do not have vision currently. They're just going to have to run away. So Armel will be fine. The team support. I can't believe this fight's been going on for nearly a minute, it feels like. And still no hero kills on either side. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but there are two traps in the pit now, and so they're going back in, but they are not going to be able to easily get back out. Tim's is going to have Sunder in three seconds, and Rior's coming back in, though. He's kind of low on mana. Supernova in five seconds. Can't they hold off long enough? The Sunray going to be canceled pretty quickly. We are using the familiar to do so, but he does have Supernova now with the Icarus Dive. Expected to come in soon right here as they're in pursuit. They're going to get one kill on a Tiny, and they're going for more. The draft being placed down by TA. There's the forward for both the Icarus Dive, but no, Chips is backwards now. He needs to pop Supernova last second. He's, He's going to die. He's familiar to the mana for That makes sense. He will end up going down the Wrath of Nature, actually. Finishes him off. First Spirit also a kill. Buyback, though, from Phoenix. I suppose now he has the mana, so he could come back in with that Supernova. <laughs> he and doesn't have to dive now. <laughs> no. Well, he'll come in with Sun Ray. There you go. He's going to see. He's going to Supernova off to the side. A pretty good placement, actually. Roshan will eventually go down HF and picks up the Aegis. He's going to be hit by the stun, but there is not enough follow-up from TNC. So, man, that Roshan took forever and really not the most casualties in the end, but Chaos does ultimately get it. Yeah, I think Chaos are overall satisfied with that. Obviously, it was not remotely as clean as they were hoping, but... Not having the mana for Supernova hurts significantly, because whenever TNC were starting to bully Chaos back up to their high ground and their Radiant Ancients, it definitely looked like TNC were ready to take the fight over and, you know, maybe even let Terrorblade and TA finish off the Roche. But Tim's had to come in, and Chaos was like, wait, he's not supernova -ing. Oh, he doesn't have 200 mana for it, because he's been too busy casting Sunray, and... Uh, his fire spirits for this like 90 second long fight and so they're able to get out and now we are chasing down ninja boogie It's just a lone dazzle Yeah, that's no man's land right there free kill And you do see medallion finished on visage as well after the roshan fight So they have that now they got the mech on shadow fiend with the aegis They're gonna push back tins is caught, but not so much. He's got the acrus dive. He'll use it But not used defensively no supernova threat for 30 more seconds or so. This should be an easy tier 2 tower kill. So we are starting to see the momentum now working for Chaos, but continue to look at TNC though, specifically this Templar Assassin. Can't forget about Armel because he's working on the Desolator. Uh, 1800 gold saved up, needs both Mithril Hammers still, but essentially halfway there to finishing it. But they're just going to go tier 3 because of that. Yeah, it's the 
downside of going for the Blink Dagger first, which I would have done the same thing. Go going Blink Dagger first in a game like this just seems like it makes sense. Going for Desolator is a little too glass cannon. But the five man of chaos is making this Blink Dagger MTA pretty useless. There's no way you can go into it. In fact, she gets oh. caught out by tiny. Yeah, that's a bad spot. She was going in for the flank, but they ended up seeing her. He mentioned Tiny with the opening, gets the free kill. She has buyback, but that's the last thing you want to be doing. Not even having the Desolate to finish this, we just mentioned. So tier three goes down. Yeah, they're going to still push this, because why not, right? I mean, Supernova is ready, so maybe this is why Magnetize on every hero feels like as well. Supernova plays, but they're going to kill it. They just don't run away. We got Kenny, get out of there. It doesn't look like it. The false up. Pops at the last second will barely keep him alive. Misery going to be the sacrificial lamb because of it. So. For now, at least, we are staying alive, but nope, never mind. He will took down after the fact. Tavo also gets picked off, and the hold is successful for TNC. It did require a buyback on Templar, but they make it happen, and now they want to push themselves. They do lose three in the end, though, so that is a bit of a cost, but it's not as expensive as losing your axes early on, because, again, what we're noticing is their lack of wave clear from TNC, which is allowing has to go for relatively risk free pushes, but going for Rax is always going to have some risk to it, so feeling a little bit too confident after being able to kill off TA and a really good initiation by Rior, though I think Chaos were a little too grouped up because yeah, they, it was one magnetized cast, it wasn't even like any stones that were chaining onto other heroes it was just Rior rolling in, hitting R, and then four heroes got magnetized mm -hmm. bunch of bad juju from Ninja Boogie bunch of DOT from the Supernova and I think the reflection also caught like all five heroes off of Terra Blood, so a little bit too much clumping up from Chaos cost them a fair amount, but in the end, they still did claim that uh, tier 3 too far. Get tier 3, but Terror Blade is actually looking pretty good right now. Uh, he's got the Manta style almost finished, has the ultimate orb needs to purchase. And of course the BKB queued up after the fact, and that, as usual, it feels like once he gets the BKB, Things are going to be a bit different for TNC in terms of their fighting chances. And there is also, we saw a little bit of it earlier on too, the whole Shallow Grave presence is it's pretty absurd with a Sunder Ready Terror Blade. You throw that Shallow Grave up and he doesn't care that he's about to die come, kind of like that Scar effect. Because all of a sudden he gets a Sunder off pretty freely within that 5 second window is, is the idea at least. Well, that's assuming that you're going to be able to make it to the point where you can then build BKB because they are just proceeding to eliminate all of these towers one by one. Top of them managed to complete the Crimson Guard on Nature's Prophet. So, Manta style though is just now freshly completed the Terra Blade is going to lose a lot of difficulty, but Rior wants to fight again. Yeah, he does. Goes in HFN, manning up though. Guardian Greaves are ready, so look at that. One boot for each foot, but they're running away. The Magnetize once again doing so much damage. Misery forced to use a false promise on himself, gets hit by the Supernova, as does Tiny. Misery, I'm pretty sure, is dead, as is Tiny. They are both indeed going to explode. The chase will continue. Oh, Fire Spirit still going out. The trap slow on Shadow oh, no, Fiend. Blink. Is it oh, no. enough? No, it cannot get close enough, actually. Avoids in the trees. And we in the backlands able to pick off Tunes, meanwhile. So. Bit of a distraction, and did they overstep now, Gabby? Has to be a little bit careful. Sunder is ready, as well as a Shallow Grave online. I hear the Aegis being taken away, by the way. It's not Weeha. Well, I guess it wasn't Shadow Fiends. He's the one playing yeah, very defensive. Fine. They're going to go for TA, though, as he's going uphill alone. A little bit blind. RML, cop at the Sprout, but melded. He'll be fine again. No support necessarily right here. And Chaos continues to retreat. It seems like, at least, but not really. As Tavo, he TPs in. <laughs> and he's like, no, we want to fight some more, damn it. I don't think I mean, you catch our mail. You retreat as much as what's necessary, <laughs> and once, you know, I mean, everyone's full mana, full HP. HFN got his Aegis reclaimed. Weeha is uh, basically in full fighting shape, and the offensive glyph. I don't know why that was used, but whatever the case, they're going to finish off the tier two. And yeah, this is their plan. It, like, it doesn't really matter how many bodies you lose. At the end of the day, you're still taking objectives, and TNC can't do anything about it. And they you have to keep this relentless pace up because if TA manages to get her desolator finished, or if Terrible manages to get BKB finished, then these fights that are already not looking too great for us start looking way, way worse ever these core positions aren't gonna get kited anymore. Part of me really wonders, and I, you know, I hate to think this, but it's like, I am scratching my head, because for one, you know, we never see new boots on one hero, especially if they're holding on in the game, maybe, maybe late, late game, but 
Did he almost, was it almost like just clockwork for him? He was like, oh, I'm just going to build my power jets and then realized after the fact, oh, crap, that's right. We're going to guard finger strat. And so he went back to it. I, I don't know. It, it, just, it just seems so odd to me still, but I, I think it's just he a, still has it. It's, a, it's just a flavor thing. Mids are very particular with how they like to itemize. And I'm sure a lot of shadow teams are like, I'm not building greaves on this team. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And teams are like, no, it's pretty good. And he was like, <laughs> all right, I'll build it. But after I get my treads, so I think it's just like a it's stylistic choice it's however you want to flare your hero and whatever feels comfortable for you because mid heroes and temple heroes in general are all about like how you interpret your pace of the hero and forcing yourself into something that you're not comfortable with. like if you in a pub start building greaves and you've never built it before it will feel very weird because your power levels and your power spikes are not traditional shadow fiend spikes you all you're all over the place and now i just find might also be well, dying. I was gonna say, Green's gonna come into play right here. He actually used the girl lady to purge off the soul, if anything. He loved the bit he was taking damage right there. You already know, Tiny. Oh, false promise is gonna be you. Misfits, he's not afraid to use that just on whatever targets necessary. But now, of course, we'll be on cooldown. Tavo, there's that rolling boulder. No chance to TP out. He stopped in 10. 40 seconds on that resurrection for Nature's Prophet right now. And again, the more that TNC can continue to delay things right here, the, the scarier this Terror Blade be, continues to become. Now 2,900 gold saved up, so the BKB just around the corner. The Deso has been finished on TA. We're going to go with Dragonlance, maybe even a full Hurricane Pike after the fact on that. So uh, the item progression is certainly there. And I don't want to call Chaos being on a tight window necessarily, but yeah, go I'll call it. The they, are, they are definitely on a window right now. So? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I think I, this, the I, decision for TNC to take a fight out of their base was a great decision because... Like, it, it, Chaos is doing everything like clockwork. This is clearly a strategy they, they have practiced before because it is just so systematic. They took a tier 3 tower in mid, and I think that that was like a bonus that they weren't ready to take so early on. And as a result, they took Bot Shrine, they took Top Prime, they were already posted up for the Roach that is respawning now. And so Misery walks into the pit, immediately finds out. It's all like clockwork, and so I can... Imagine that they themselves are like, we got like eight minutes to finish this game, boys. So let's get cracking and yeah. immediately go into the pit. But TNC are respecting it. And they're not just sitting back in their base being like, nah, it's fine. We got late game. Just wait until late game. Roshan defense here. By the way, welcome to those watching on the stream. We, we finally got things going right here. They were having some technical issues on their side. But it looks like we got the connection taken care of. And uh, we should be good to go now. So... Uh, if you haven't been watching in-game, well, we'll catch you up perhaps after this fight, because we're only 23 minutes in, but right now, big, this would be a second Roshan. Tim, he has a super now, but oh, can he get it up in time? Just tossed, and he was not ready for that. He has a buyback, though. He'll be coming back right away, so, they, they I mean, they know the Supernova's ready, and yeah, they're going to have to be a little careful now. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't panic cast it. You can definitely get the cast animation off between Avalanche stuns, but there's no point if every single hero is looking at you. And again, he's he's only level 12. He just did level 12. So it's not going to take that many attacks. But they're contesting it. And Armel is a hero that can definitely contest it. Assuming he doesn't get bashed. Yeah, that's a bit awkward. It's not the easiest necessarily still. So Terrible even goes in there. Meta forms in three seconds. Does have the BKB ready to go as well. Avalanche already used. We're here. He's going to go in. Put the magnetized up. Then Aegis is going to be taken by Armel as well. It's going to the Roshan kill on top. That's a good start for the entire team right now. As Metamorphs is up with the BKB. They take out Tiny. Toss away. Not going to be enough. Phoenix still going forward. Shadowfiend's like, I got to get the hell on out of here. He'll TP away. But Tavo, is it going to be the same? Probably not. The Sprout protecting as much as he can. The Crimson Guard only so much. He will go down though. And he's dead for 40 seconds. Again, no buyback. So TNC, I, I think it's, it's safe to say at this point especially... They're now in the lead pretty comfortably, and they're going to make great use of the Sages, at least that's all, that's the idea. Yeah, they are going to give Chaos a taste of their own medicine. They have all the resources necessary to start mowing down towers of their own. And they've got a fair amount of time left on Metamorphosis. They can definitely get some tier 3 tower damage. Rior, trying to initiate, but maybe a little bit too far. <laughs> Well, well, let's just call it bait, I suppose. No, no Shallow Grave to save. In fact, Dazzle, that's because he got tossed in and stunned. He'll Shallow Grave himself at the last second. And he's going to try to TP out in front of them, and it actually works out for the Dazzle RML, though. Unfortunately, they can't save him, and that's kind of important because he had the Aegis. So not only is that going to be burned, but can he maybe blink out in time? That's, that ain't easy with the Avalanche right there. So he does not, and he is dead. Well, Chaos, they say, sure, we'll take a taste of our own medicine and spit it right back in your face.
Yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of going for a tier 3 push. I did not like the idea of going for a tier 3 fight. And I think Rior may have overestimated how ready his team was to go in for a full-on engagement. Like, because they're also, like, fairly high level. After that fight, the levels kind of level uh, balanced out. But the respawn times on Chaos were fairly low. And all of that combat was happening at the Roche Pit. And so, by the time they finally approached tier 3, most of Chaos was already respawning. On. They're going for that the racks. They're, they're gonna force a, what would be a, another buyback in this game on TA. At least that's the idea. She still has four seconds. It. I think she should do it. I don't think they should let this racks go. Well, maybe now because they're initiating the supernova run in the midst No, never mind. Not gonna be casted off. In fact, down goes Phoenix. He could not get it off. He has no buyback, remember. He's out for 70, and they are not buying back on TA either. In fact, BKB from Terrible committed. He doesn't have metamorphosis style, so maybe that's the ultimate reason. But then why even try to take the fight at that point? Oh, King RD, it looked like he was going for a toss attempt. Not going to happen, however. But they get the racks, and they're going to the top lane now. So it, it seems like the decision-making, they're not all on the same page for TNC. And this, this is going to snowball quickly. Yeah, this is what this lineup has potential to do here on the Radiant. Do you mean to tell me that their stand-in may not be communicating as well? <laughs> it's possible. Well, he's going to go in right here and put the Magnetize out, but he's out for 70 now. They do kill Shadow Fiend at least. Been is stunning. Trying to go for retreat mode now from Chaos. Again, they got the melee racks top even. Some misery is like, all right, fine, kill me. We got what we want, and we're going to get the hell on out of here now. Uh, yeah, so back to that stand-in issue. Uh, you know, maybe it is showing a bit here in game one. It does seem like that. Rior seems the most trigger happy out of everyone else. And I, I guess I'm okay with the decision of CA not to buy back because if she buys back and she dies, then that's game losing instantly. Whereas right now, TNC are still in this game. They're one and a half Raxes down, but they have much better late game, so it's not like a it's not a terrible situation. And the Nature's Prophet is not built to abuse a Rax and a half down. Tavo is not equipped to be like, aha, I, I can do unlimited pressure on your base now. Yeah. He is a team-oriented Nature's Prophet. Although he's trying to snipe the Courier, and he may get it. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> nice. Nothing like your Courier dying at your fountain. <laughs> it's just like the worst feeling ever. That's Although I guess they kind of does give up their awards galore in his base, in, inside the Dire base, but that's worth it if you're able to get that kill off. Yeah. Oh, easy kill for them. And uh, that net worth swinging back in their favor. In fact, taking a look at the graph, it's, yeah, I was going to say, it seems like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's swinging. It's, it's been in favor of TNC for most of it. Uh, but again, Chaos just continues to win a fight when they need to and then push back. So will this be another kind of a reset here? Or will they actually be able to kind of try to close it out and eventually get the Mega Creeps, of course? That's, that's the bottom racks, I suppose, the range racks top is still there but that's something else to keep in mind too with this nature's profit is the constant split pushing of him now he didn't go this aggressive split push bill so perhaps not as crazy as some usual np games but it's still at least a threat that they got to worry about it is but i think uh they they're equipped for it as you can see tia has littered the bot lane with traps and so she knows that this is the only lane that is a concern in terms of the last remaining objective for Chaos. That's the only thing that they have left to do. Although, Chaos may throw a curveball as they are smoking up and may attempt to do like a mid into tier 4's play if they can find a pick. Smoke but they have to go a long ways to the enemy side of the map as right now TNC are playing very, very safe. Yeah, this is, this is the ultimate save. You have Terrorblade pushing on top, but I mean, he's going to TP away now. He's got 4,000 gold saved up, by the way, so... Where's that? I have Scotty. But he has a mind bow. They don't have to go too far now. Misery is like, guys, they found them. <laughs> they're all here. <laughs> and they're just going to run. So it's, it's, it's not, that's one way to do it if you're chaos. That they get information, I suppose. Yeah, but it's still a profitable smoke for TNC. Anything that continues to buy time is worthwhile, even though it's just a support kill. It's anything that's keeping the bot tier 3 alive and all of your heroes alive. So this is definitely no... It's not an easy game for chaos to finish it off. And I am definitely looking to Terrible to be as with his uh, what? Oh, he's already used his BKB twice. Okay, so he's he's been getting into a fair share of fights. But yeah, he's got 4.6k gold now completed on the hero. He is going to start progressing far faster than this Greaves Shadow Fiend or this Crimson Guard Nature's Prophet could ever hope to keep up with. Now AC just finished on Visage, so talk about another great item for the team. Uh, take advantage of, of course, and Visage alone. So, again, back to the idea of split push, even. 
come into play, so another good item for him. Shadow Fiend, I'm also... He had the axe queued up, and which he still does, but then he ended up buying a Yasha first. I don't know if he planned to finish, like a Yasha Kaya, perhaps, or an SNY for that matter. I could see either one, I suppose, or even maybe he goes the Manta. I don't know. It, it, his item build is, again, continue to be a bit funky, starting with the double boots. We've already seen. I don't like the idea of Agam Scepter, though. Okay, he changes it to a Sanj. Yeah, I... I don't, I don't honestly like the idea of that mu that much either. I, I think it's, it's awkward though because like no aura items are really useful and right now literally all of Chaos is building aura items on all their heroes. I don't think a Shiva's would go very far. Um, I, I think it would be okay for him to build like a butterfly or something like that. Anything yeah. that helps him... I guess Sange does help him tank up. It's just like it's a mid-game tanking item and so I'm not really a big fan of that. Um... Well, it's interesting because he's almost his level 20 talent, right? And that's going to be very telling where he decides to ultimately go this game. Like, because if he goes to 2 damage per soul, then it's okay, you know, then he really should be building some more right-click assistance. But if he goes to Shadow Ray's damage, then he is going to be, safely say, pretty committed to this. We're going to be all about magic, and maybe the eggs would make more sense if he goes back to that, but... Still, let's, uh, we'll, we'll see when he gets there, I suppose. But again, yeah, the SNY is finished now. I mean, the Ags would even make sense with the Ag, uh, with the uh, damage per soul talent because you also get more souls True. with the Ag Scepter. So, yeah, I I don't know. I this is a very awkward spot for any Shadow fan because there isn't really no right answer. It just feels like which is the least wrong answer. Like, oh, yeah, terrible! It's like all right, let's go. Just pops reflection in the face. And he's just going to the whole, I'm going to run at the strategy. HF and trying his best to get away. Already popped the Guardian Cruise. He's being locked down. They're going to go for the Rocky Moon. Spots to be KB. He does get a Requiem off. That's damage mitigation, remember, as well as damage. Misery went down, by the way. He could get off False Promise. And they lose the Shadow Fiend for 70 seconds. He's staying dead as well. Two are staying dead in total. And TNC, they want more. They're going to go for King RD. They're going to get King RD. That is three dead. With no buyback. Yeah. That... I that initiation was so lazy. <laughs> it was. It was so casual. It was like, alright, I guess I'll reflection. I, I guess I'll I guess I'll metamorphosis. Yeah. I think they should just go with tier fours. Maybe they don't know that they don't have buybacks. Well you see top lane, it's just profit is gonna be distraction, but Phoenix is okay, I'll I'll come up here and throw out some fiery spirits, but as you mentioned, yeah, it's, they don't have that information 100%, so they're gonna go play it safe. Yeah, because the only reason I don't like this is because they can't get top racks, because they're still a top tier uh, two tower, but yeah, they're gonna get racks and a half. Probably? Uh, Crimson? <laughs> yeah, trying. Yeah, racks and a half. And Gabby's metamorphosis times out, so back off, and now you have basically equalized the pressure. Uh, both teams have a Rax and a half down now, and it's just one tier two tower benefit in terms of structure, structural advantage right now for Chaos, but in terms of any other benefits, nothing is really going for them right now. They are not winning in terms of net worth. They are not winning in terms of experience. Really all they have is maybe team spirit in terms of how many auras they're going to be <laughs> grouping up with. They got they got the spirit working. Yeah, they got the the hoorah going on their side. Well, that can only go so far. I mean, win percentage right now, 18% for them. Definitely uh, makes sense. But, I mean, there's still a chance with that set. In fact, Gabby, okay, they don't actually see him. He is Ibis. That's the sentry one on the dire side. They go for Rayer, but now Gabby's going to open. Shallow Grave or Spirit. Going to see him for now. There's the reflection. Here comes Icarus Dug. No follow-up with the Supernova just yet. He has it ready to go, though. Buyback from our Sprint immediately. Supernova, pretty bad placement because they're just going to right-click it down, actually. And now Phoenix is dead, so he has a buyback, but of course, no threat of the Supernova. Shadow Grave the last second, and there's that what we're talking about with the Sunder for Gabby Seal. He's back to full life. We have a very spread fight here. Pouring in from Nature's Profit. Trying to save Night Top with the Centaur from Weeha as well. That Michael continuing to come to play the Forest half away on top of that. Is it going to be able to save them with that half life? Buyback from Dazzle. Even these familiar stuns are all over the place. Locking them down forever, but it still simply put is not enough. And Weeha does go down. They cut through that skin of his. And now Oracle, all they can do is just try to run away fast, but can only go so oh fast. My God. <laughs> that damage. damage. Dear God. And Roshan's up. He's, he's going to spawn right here as they check it. And Gabby checks it. And I don't know if they'll... Yeah, they won't even have to spend Metamorphosis to that. I'm still not a fan of that fight. I don't think TNC should have taken it. Because Gabby did not have Metamorphosis. That was very, very possibly a game-losing fight if it didn't be as spread as it ended up being. 
because only now Gabby has Metamorphosis, but they end up going for it. It only costs a Dazzle buyback, so whatever. This is just the advantage of being 11k net worth ahead. But yeah, I'm not a fan of that. That was like a classic DNC moment where every single Filipino is watching. They're like, oh god, this is how it all ends. <laughs> no, not like this, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you the Matrix skip, yeah. Um, Gabby, though, is that butterfly, yeah, around the corner. Refresher shard in the backpack currently, so. Not only with that one, but two metamorphosis ready to go. In fact, we'll just go over and right click on that butterfly. So they, they really do not have an answer now. This is a team that did not build to scale. Uh, they built for an earlier game victory. We're now 35 minutes down. They're down 8K. Obviously, again, still not 100% out of it, but they're going to need the overextension. They're going to need the misplays out of TNC, which, yes, is not impossible, but that's uh, what they're going to be relying on. And well, we'll see if they get that up here at the top lane. As here's that push now. With Terror Blade. King RD. Alright, gotta go now. Avalanche. Toss in. Not much follow up though. Just simply trying to stall. The tier 3 is already dead. It Chris dive forward. Supernova is ready, but choosing not to use it there. Topple's trying to flank somewhat, but there's the racks and there they go. Just like that, they, they fall to pieces in the back line. Supernova's gonna be committed because Tavo trying to flank them, but now he's having to run away with Wii and everyone else. Swap play from Gab on the Sunder, and Wii on just cannot get away. The stickiness of that Eye of Scotty. Triple buyback. They're doing what they can. They know this is the beginning of the end. It looks like TNC potentially gonna be taking game number one here, unless some insane last stand from Chaos. And they just profit. Go make a quick base race play. Oh, wait, your items can't yeah. do it. <laughs> These auras are looking real pretty, though. They're not taking that much damage when they're all grouped up like this, but I think you'd rather be dealing damage, not mitigating damage if you're chaos right now. Yeah, it's not much they can do again there. Their damage output is not nearly enough of a threat. Gabby, another Sunder. I thought I almost thought he had a 25 talent, but no, it's just the natural Sunder cooldown. Fast enough, though, we have false promise. We'll save it for now, and probably should stay alive in the end. In fact, Jello gave also saving the Earthquake on the other side, and Meanwhile, the illusion's still dwindling down that tier 4 tower, so I suppose it's not going to be 100% over just yet. Enough of a hold from Chaos to actually prevent them from truly finishing what is game number one here, this best of three, but uh, they, they, they're going to have to do some kind of all-in push at this point now, up against Mega Creeps and only one tier 4 tower. Yeah, I mean, they can they can hope for a mistake. The, like, the, the, the condition is still the same. You just need to pray that TNC slip up, which is definitely a possibility with this team. But they have to slip up 22,000 net worth worth of bad luck, pretty much. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are death pushing. It's up against exactly. Mega Creeps, and they're proceeding. Like yeah, I said, I gotta go Olin at this point. Shadow Fiend, man, he's had the same items for a while now, too. <laughs> they've, been, they've been not able to progress. Okay, well, they killed TA, so she has a buyback at least. And they get a Scythe on Tim's. Tim's Supernova, and it's gonna commit to it. Will they be able to kill it off? They're having trouble with it for the time being. Requiem does go off though too, and Supernova does not go off in time. They do kill Phoenix. Out for 100 seconds. TA bought back though. Now RML back into the fight. False promise of misery. I don't think he's living through that. that. Just too many right clicks. Ninja Boogie, Shallow Grave will save him though. Buyback from Oracle, but he's gonna be so far away, and that will be it. GG is called. So, <laughs> chaos. It's they, they created it there in that fight. They gave themselves a, what seemed like a, a goal, but quickly closed by TNZ and they do a secure game.